Hi, Bone here, and today I'm going to be talking about the MTAR. The MTAR is a really fun gun to play with, but I had a hard time keeping ammo in it, especially when four or five enemies would come around the corner. I'd have to spray all my ammo out, and sometimes I would die. With a 31 round magazine topped off, it was a good amount of ammo, but having the high fire rate of 900 made it harder to keep your ammo in stock. Being a carbine made it easy to use it in any class. I prefer the assault class just because of the medic pack, but support also is a great one. Also, having an engineer is a great complement, just because it's fire rate and ability to get controlled with the right attachments. I found running with the angled foregrip, or stubby grip, and muzzle brake was quite good. I also used an RDS because it's a, more of a close range weapon. I do apologize about all the metro footage, but I was just really busy this last few weeks, and I was not able to get much footage. Also, the servers that I was on, my ping was too high, so I couldn't really get a good set of footage from those. You can get the Simtex stats. The gun runs with a max damage of 25, a minimum damage of 15.4. This is rather low, but with the high fire rate, it can make up with that somewhat. It runs with a high fire rate of 900 rounds per minute. That's pretty good for a carbine. It runs with a longer reload time of 3 seconds while empty, and 2.4 seconds with run on left in the chamber. The right time to reload was somewhat difficult. You should get used to using a secondary weapon quite often with it. With a more powerful secondary weapon like a Desert Eagle, or a shorty 12 gauge is a pretty good idea, especially in close quarters maps. The recoil is somewhat tricky to control with a .34 up and a .4 left and right. Its first shot multiplier is 2.8, making it better to use an angled foregrip with. You should be able to control it quite easily with the right attachments. Honestly, it was harder to control at first without the at proper attachments, but after you unlock the angled foregrip or stubby grip and the muzzle brake, it's quite easy to control if you know what you're doing. If you absolutely know what you're doing, I strongly recommend not using the heavy barrel, even if you're engaging at long distance. In my opinion, with DICE adding the ability to equip a bipod, I don't know what they were thinking. Why would you have a bipod with such a small gun? If you really want to and have the flash hider unlocked, just throw it on there just for fun. In scenarios, I wouldn't recommend using the suppressor just because it lowers the muzzle velocity and range so much. The MTAR is a fun challenge. You have to get a kill with a sniper, assault rifle, LMG, and a hand grenade in a round. It's rather fun, but you have to die multiple times to do it. I unlocked it on Metro just because it's rather easy to unlock on there. One of the best secondaries I found with it was the SW40. You have to unlock that in Naval Strike by getting 10 kills with impact grenades. That's a rather easy one to get. These next few kills, I was able to steal multiple kills from my teammates just because having the higher fire rate and some reaction skill allowed me to dive behind my teammates and get the kills. I'm using it in close quarters maps was probably the better way to go with it. Just because it has the higher fire rate and people are closer together, so you can get more kills with it and be in less danger from long range weapons. To sum this all up, MTAR is a fantastic gun in many ways. In many ways it's not. In longer ranges, I don't find it to be very useful because it has terrible range and hard to control recoil. But in close ranges, it's very good. High fire rate makes up for its ability to have low damage about the bad audio in this recording, but that's all for this update. Thanks for watching and see you in Battlefield.